Thought Media Network proudly presents a weekly exploration of various spiritual practices with renowned spiritual authors, coaches, teachers, and Dr. Tracy Brown, RSCP. And now, here's Tracy. Hey everybody, Tracy Brown. It is uh, Poetry, Prayer, and Practice. Noon, Mountain Time, every Tuesday. And I am so, so, so happy that you have decided to jump in and join in today. Even though a lot of times people don't like to talk about the topic of today's show. So we're going to talk a little bit about death and immortality. If this is your first time hanging out with me on this show, then just know that um, you can put comments and add questions into the chat or into the comments. And, um, and I can engage with you in that way. I will share some information and some ideas and in most shows i give you a call to action or we might do some spiritual practice to, together and if you have been with me before then you already know that the reason the show is titled poetry prayer and practice is to give us the bandwidth excuse me to give us the bandwidth to be able to talk about poetry as a spiritual practice or what spiritual um, experiences inspired by poetry to dive more deeply into prayer on some weeks and then to be able to uh, talk about spiritual practice in general and how we use it to guide our lives. Um, there is a Carrie Tinboom quote that basically says, do you use prayer as your steering wheel or as your spare tire? And on this show, we are very committed to exploring ways to use spiritual practice, prayer and other spiritual practices as our steering wheels for our lives not something to just be pulled out in times of crisis, um, right? Or when things aren't going well. So today we're diving into death and immortality. It won't be the deep, deep dive, but this, as many things happen with this show, um, circumstances, like what's going on in the world or what's happening in my life. And in the last couple of weeks, I've had a couple of different people who are dealing with what in the medical community would be called terminal diagnoses. And over the last six months, there have been several people I've supported who either they or a family member have made their transition or, in, or are in the process of doing so. And uh, I picked up a book at random, right? I picked up um, Finwick Holmes, Being and Becoming, at random. It's a book I pick up every now and then. And I was just thumbing through it. And I noticed chapter 21 was titled, Does Death End the Process Which Being Becomes? Does Death End the Process by Which Being Becomes? Like, do you stop being? Do you stop becoming? because you die. And uh, I read the, the chapter's not super, super long. And I read it three times because I read it once to get the overall, you know, where he was coming from and the points he was making. And then I went back and I read it really slowly. 
And then I went back a third time and started highlighting things. And I think that's the moment when uh, I was like, oh, oh, yeah, poetry prayer practice. We're going to dive into this chapter a little bit. So again, the book is Finwick Holmes, not Ernest Holmes. It's Ernest Holmes' brother, Finwick Lindsay Holmes. And the book is Being and Becoming, written in 1920. So written and published even before Science of Mind was written. The book Science of Mind was written. Um, and it really is a great book. I, Sorry, I'm not going to get distracted, but it really, really, really is a great book. I love this book. So in the table of contents, what Fenwick Holmes does is he gives some a summary, a summary of each chapter, but it's written into the table of contents. So here is his summary on the chapter, Does Death End the Process by Which Being Becomes? Fenwick Holmes. Creation is an endless process, and therefore the passing of being into expression will never be completed. We shall always be on the pathway of becoming. Proof of immortality lies here, for we cannot conceive of an end to the process any more than we can conceive of an end to numbers. Again, since impersonal mind creates and manifests exactly as we think, it must manifest immortality for we never cease to impress the concept of immortality upon it. The first law of nature is self-preservation. And by a common instinct, we impress this idea on impersonal mind. Thus, we impress the idea of life and it manifests as life. We impress the idea of immortality and it manifests as immortality. Physical death must not be confounded with the experience of the soul. Thus, death should be thought of not as the end of things, but the beginning. It is not a taking off but a taking on. Thus is death swallowed up in victory by the soul that knows him in whom it has believed. Now, actually, like I said, I picked up the book at random and... I didn't go back and read that student outline that's in the table of contents. Because if I had, I might have not read the chapter, just honestly. If I had read it before this very moment, I might not even have read it to you. Because while I recognize many of these lines that are in the summary, they are in the chapter they're not like all right together in the chapter. So this idea, but it does give us a summary of this idea that um, death is not the end of becoming, that becoming is eternal, and that when we leave this physical body, we do not stop having the experience of the soul developing, expressing, expanding, and evolving, that there will simply be some other way for our next experience of growth. Now, we don't know what that looks like. 
We don't know what shape or form we will have. We don't know what the earth suit turns like, what will be the equivalent of the earth suit in the next iteration. We know the earth suit physically deteriorates and it goes away, but does death of the physical body end the process by which we become? No, we just become the next iteration of our soul's expression. Now, I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. I know it makes perfect sense to me based on how I understand the science of mind belief in the eternality, immortality, and continuity of the human soul, of each soul. And so in that sense, since that is one of the basic tenets or the basic principles of science of mind, and I have come to really believe, understand, and believe it, it makes perfect sense to me that our becoming does not end. So I'm going to quote you some things from the chapter that really stood out for me or helped me weave it together. Fenwick Holmes refers to um, mind in a certain way that I may translate into universal mind because that makes it kind of easy to see universal capital U and M capital M mind separate from the human brain or just thinking mind. So he starts this chapter with this quote, becoming is the process by which either God or man expresses being. With God, there are evidences of eternal unfoldment and self-manifestation. Is it so with man or with humanity? Our answer to these questions must be based on the law of personal mind and impersonal mind. So impersonal mind is universal mind. That's, I, that's my substitute that sometimes is helpful for people. Impersonal mind meaning, right, it is no respecter of persons. It doesn't change. It doesn't operate differently for Tracy than it does for Fiona. It doesn't operate differently for Shay than it does for, you know, the next person or, right? It's a universal principle. It is the way that spiritual principle works and uh, personal mind then reflects our individualism, our uh, humanity, our conditions that, that we are in. And so he reminds us at the very beginning that becoming is like the natural process of beingness, the creative process may make sense to some of you, or that life is always begetting more life, that life is creating itself again and again, that life is creating from itself that which needs to express. And on the in the human experience, we are modeling and using the same creative process that we set an intention or decide what we want. And universal mind does everything to respond to that and then deliver that experience, that form, that structure, that um, relationship, that it takes, it becomes and takes on a form based on what we drop into the process. Oh, that's a really big splint. Sorry, um, don't get distracted by it. <laughs> had a, just had a little surgery. And uh, so for the next few weeks, you'll be seeing a big wrap around my hand. 
Um, so we are always inventing or creating or becoming the next expression of ourselves. And when we're in our human form, we think about that really on the conscious level. We see it happening, right? We see ourselves expressing ourselves as a teenager. And we know that we evolve the way that we express ourselves, the priorities we set, what's really important to us, uh, what kind of job we have, the family we build and grow. All of those things, we don't expect them to stay static our entire lives. We are constantly becoming. And for many of us on the spiritual path, are being guided by our spiritual understandings, we see that becoming as becoming more and more in alignment with what we know to be the spiritual truth or the way spiritual laws express. And as we design our lives intentionally, right? We are designing them in that way. But we, in any case, we don't expect that the decisions we made 15 years ago are going to be necessarily the same. They might be, but we know we have the freedom and sometimes even the responsibility to choose differently. So this, I, this question, does death end the process of becoming, no, it's just that we continue to become, but in a different form. Now that's Tracy's summary. Let me read you some of what Fenwick Holmes wrote about this. So the beginning of the chapter, he does do some general work around personal and impersonal mind. And then he has a section titled, The Idea of Immortality Impresses Its Necessity on Creative Mind. Right, that that's an impression that, uh, what pattern do I inevitably give universal mind about my own immortality. And we can shape that, right? And people from different religious paths do have some different ideas about immortality. Does it exist or not? Reincarnation and what that means or doesn't mean. And we impress that into universal mind and we live according to that right some religions teach that you know your immortality will exist in either heaven or hell or maybe purgatory and so we operate on our in our human level based on our beliefs about that but from a purely spiritual level, the idea that spirit would create itself into a specific form, Tracy Brown, the soul that is, or the creation of Tracy Brown is currently expressing in this human suit or in this human experience, but when this body goes away, spirit doesn't kill Tracy Brown. Tracy Brown is an invisible presence, invisible entity, an idea in the mind of God, in the mind of that which creates all life that simply takes on a different expression physically. So, um, Oh, I have this highlighted, and so I'm going to read it. The continuity of experience demands that we go on in even development over there, like wherever there is after this human experience. 
Thus, there will be all grades of society and of interest. Again, as we draw around us those who most fit the thoughts and ideas of our own mind, we shall have society over there that is most likely ourselves, most like ourselves. We shall have our friends and probably our enemies. We shall each have our own work to perform. But the beautiful thing about it is that we shall all go on in unfoldment and that there can be no doubt that the very desires of our heart will draw to us those whom we love and those who love us. And I took a breath before when I was reading this. Like I said, I read it once fast, once slow, and then I read back through the highlight. And I know I highlighted this not so much because I absolutely agree with it. I just thought it was a really interesting thing to think about that no matter what form our soul takes, we're likely to draw magnetically attract or magnetically be attracted to those souls that we love and who love us, like who get us, where there's some commonality. Or for me, when I say those we love and those who love us, I don't necessarily mean romantic love or even just familial, family relationships or best friends. You know, I think there's no accident that we have, you know, a Martin Luther King or a Nelson Mandela, right? Or a Cesar Chavez or, right? I think that there's like you're drawn if the, you're you're the change agent for your generation or you are um driven for you are driven to be a catalyst for justice or fairness and so you tend to attract people who are or, or attract conditions where that is needed and i think no matter what the expression of society is, you know, what form it takes, that there are soul, people whose soul must, must live during those times or to create or guide or lead or instigate or inspire action that is cultural growth or cultural action. And in that sense, they're drawn to people who love what they are helping to be a catalyst for and not so much repel, but people who are not interested in that are drawn to something else. So I think, so I love that, that reminder or that not even a reminder, that thing to think about, that if we truly are immortal, if we are eternally expressing that who we are now is who we have been and who we will be simply adapted to the context of the form we are in and the conditions that we are in. So he goes on to write with the subtitle of death. Is death inevitable? Must all die in order to live again? Turning once again to the law of impersonal mind or universal mind, we see that it manifests to us just what we give to it in idea. What then do all of us give as an idea of life and death? Well, we give the cultural idea, of course. It's the experience of the ages that we repeat. 
And so I end quote. And I, one of the things I love about this is the reminder that, you know, we're making it all up. We're making it all up anyway. We don't really know what happened before this experience of Tracy Brown showing up as part of humanity in the 20th and 21st century. And I don't really know what's going to happen with Tracy Brown in the 22nd century, because I, I do assume that I will not be still living in this human body 70 years from now, 65 years from now. Um, so do I think I will still be living. I think I think the soul, Tracy Brown, the the essence of Tracy Brown will be having an experience of life. But I have no idea what that's going to look like, be like, where it's going to be. Is it what you right? No idea whatsoever. But I do believe that when the body dies, the soul does not. And so later on the page, Fenwick Holmes writes, we are changeless beings in a world of change. We are changeless beings in a world of change. If I made slides for this, I, that would definitely be a slide. We are changeless beings in a world of change. And then he goes on to write something that I must have read 10 times. So I hope it resonates with you as well. This plane can never hold for us all the possibilities of self-expression, which after all is the purpose of life. We must go on. Repeating, because I just want you to breathe it in. We are changeless beings in a world of change. This plane can never hold for us all the possibilities of self-expression. And self-expression is the purpose of life. So we must go on. It For me, that puts a whole different perspective on death where it is appropriate in our human experience to be sad when someone dies because we will miss having them in our lives. We won't be able to go on vacation with them next year. I remember when my um, brother died in 2007, um, you know, I was like, oh, We've met in Atlanta a couple of times during the National Black Arts Festival and, you know, buying art and going to different events and hanging out together. And we were planning to go to Toronto to a Caribbean festival in Toronto. And it's like, oh, I'm going to really miss the time we enjoyed together doing things like that, meeting in different cities, exploring art and culture and, right? But at the, like, I miss that, right? I miss just, you know, all the things that we could have done together, like miss them, even though they haven't happened yet. We grieve the future. But when I would get grounded in all the things we had done together and the memories we had created, I was very clear. He's off doing those kinds of things in some different form. Like no matter what his form is, he's going to explore culture and he'll be you know, checking out and supporting artists, or maybe he'll be an artist himself. 
in terms of the you know visual arts or music arts he was already an artist in this lifetime a culinary artist and an artist in creating events and you know parties and things like that i'm like oh yeah what what else is there for him to discover about himself and how will he be serving people you know and so when I read this, like this plane that we are in can never hold for us all the possibilities of the ways that we might express ourselves. I also, when I read this, I was clear that that sentence or those three sentences, especially ending with, because of that, we must go on is something that I'll use, I know, many times going forward when I am coaching or consoling uh, or sitting with people who have received a terminal diagnosis or a a, they are a family member. It's like, we must go on. We know that this life will change this life in this physical body will end but the soul is designed to eternally express and Fenwick Holmes writes the change in form is therefore inevitable and desirable for the on pushing soul in the quest of great adventures does that make you shift for a minute? It's not only inevitable, but it's not a punishment. He says it is desirable for the on pushing soul, for the soul that is eternally pushing or eternally on the quest for the next great adventure. Death then may come to the human frame, but only with great peace and sweetness. With great peace and sweetness. And I don't know if you have ever been at the bedside or, you know, with someone as they actually make their transition, but almost always, Maybe there's been fear leading up to it. Maybe there's been anger leading up to it. But most of the time, by the time the death occurs, if, and, and I'm talking in terms of there was some prep time, right? There was not the instantaneous, you know, accident uh, or instantaneous heart attack but when there's been a diagnosis or when there's been an injury or an illness and uh, there's been some time even if it's just a few hours when the person actually transitions there is this i've come to peace with this or there is a sweetness to it of oh this is done and we don't see the next breath but the next breath in in whatever form it comes there's this sweetness or i'm off on a new adventure now there are some exceptions but i'm talking about in the majority of cases and i'm thinking too about and in that sense, when it's immediate and it's not planned, um, you know, I, I can just imagine when in that moment there is the realization that this life experience that I have had up until now is ending or has ended, that there is also that peace and sweetness because the soul knows it's eternal. The soul knows it was just renting this body suit, this earth suit, and that, you know, there would be something new to come. There would be 
this call to go on in a new form. Um, in 2012, wow, it's a long time ago. I mean, longer than I was realizing. In 2012, I was in a car accident and um, one car, one vehicle, one person, and um, my car hydroplaned you know, on an um, entrance ramp to the highway, and it had been raining off and on, and you know, oil slick. And I wasn't, I mean, I probably wasn't even going 20, maybe 25 miles an hour because I, I was on a ramp and I had to slow down in general, but I also had to slow down to be able to merge into the traffic that was already there. And uh, the car hydroplaned and spun around. And then next thing I knew, I was driving directly into a 30 foot retainer wall on the side of the highway. Head first, no control over the steering wheel. And my car is about to make contact with the wall. And I was surprisingly calm. I, I freaked out as the car started hydroplaning. I realized I was freaking out, but I became hyper aware of what was going on. And I see myself going into the wall. And I wasn't scared at that moment. In fact, the words that came to mind and out of my mouth were two, really it was one word and then a thought. The word was, I felt my head go to the side and I said, really? But it wasn't a frantic really, it was like, really? And then the thought was, this is how it's going to end? I hit the wall as I'm having that thought. This is how it's going to end? Question mark. Like, of all the ways you could die. Like this? Really? Are you kidding me? I'm just trying to get to the skating rink. It's Sunday night. I skate on Sunday nights. Really? Like, this is not the time. <laughs> but it wasn't like I was arguing for more time. It was just like, no, this is it, right? What? The, what story is this? And obviously, it wasn't my time as the car went into the wall. But I guess I, you know, because I was seeing, I didn't think I had any control, but I must have turned the wheel just enough that I went at an angle and, and then turned again away from the wall. But the car was smoking and, and, you know, the front was ruined and lots of smoke coming out of the radiator. It looked like it might catch on fire. So I got out of there. I was stunned. I was stunned for a few seconds. I didn't jump out the car right away, but I did get out of the car. And for me, when I read this, it's like, oh, but in that moment where I wasn't planning to die, I had no idea that my death might come. But in that moment, it's like, really? Oh, okay. I guess this is it, right? Whatever I've done, it will speak for itself. Whatever I haven't done, I guess I'll get a chance in whatever the next iteration of this life is. And so when Fenwick Holmes is writing this, it, for me, it's giving us hope. It's giving us a way to not get so caught up in our own death or the death of someone we love as an end point. And he goes on to write, if we really understand that, he says, thus the deathbed will become the scene not of a taking off, of life, but a taking on of the next iteration of life. Now, 
I, I added something there. The quote is, um, thus the death, deathbed will become the scene, not of a taking off, but a taking on. So to give it context, no longer a focus on, oh, you're taking off this human suit and everything is over. But really what's happening is you are taking on the next adventure, the next way of expressing the essence of who you are. And he writes to end the chapter, in place of thinking of our beloved as passing into the final act of dissolution, we shall think of them now as taking the primal step in the rebirth of their soul. Before our very eyes, the beautiful beginnings of life are being effected. This is such a powerful conversation to have with ourselves and with our loved ones, that we take our spiritual belief in eternality of life and apply it to what for many is a scary conversation about death. But what if, what if, we saw death as the passageway to an even, great, even greater expression of the essence of each person. That's how I choose to look at it. I hope you got something to think about that you might want to apply in your life and um, or share with others as you find yourself in these conversations about death immortality, re reincarnation, eternality. And uh, if that was interesting to you, um, feel free if you're watching the recording to put comments in the chat and know that um, I'll still be looking at them. Or we can talk about it next week on Tuesday at noon mountain time on right here on the Poetry, Prayer, and Practice show. My name is Tracy Brown. I'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week or watch on demand at www.ntmedia.org or youtube.com slash New Thought Media Network. New Thought Media Network, positively inspiring. Learn more at www.ntmedia.org. On behalf of everyone at New Thought Media Network, thank you for being a member of our virtual family. Your financial contributions help share the New Thought message with people from around the world. Please visit and contribute at www.ntmedia.org dot org forward slash donate new thought media network come be you and please like share and subscribe until next time peace and blessings